Welcome back to the shop. My name is Michael Rains. Today, we're going to make an electrolyzer. What is an electrolyzer? It's a machine that uses the process of electrolysis to make hydrogen. That's right, we're going to make hydrogen. Now, we're going to use containers like this. Yes, this is a simple water filter. Nevertheless, it'll do the job. Let me show you the other things we're going to use. We're going to use some stainless. Now, it's not ordinary stainless, it's 403 stainless. There's different shapes and variations that you can make. I've used a number of different shapes, panels, rolls, whatever. It's stainless, and that's what makes the process happen with current. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about the current process. In order to make hydrogen, you have to pass current from one plate to another in an aqueous solution, which is a fancy word for water. And in that water, you're going to have electrolyte. Basically, anything from salt to baking soda to lye, lemon juice will even work. All the electrolyte does is conduct electricity in the water. That's all. But they use a fancy name, electrolyte. So our electrolyte today is going to be lye, which is nasty stuff. It's used as drain opener. It's illegal now to use as drain opener because it's so caustic. But it makes a great electrolyte. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. Our little plates are going to be arranged as so. We're going to have seven plates, three negative, four positive, and we're going to put them in a nice array as it's called. Before we move on, let me show you a few of the panels that I made that kind of worked. Remember, any array works, whether it's in a circle or if it's a flat plate, but you got to be careful not to use too much surface area. The problem is you're going to draw too much current, kill your battery, kill your alternator. It's not a good thing. So you want to keep the plates relatively small. Now you can see with this big plate, it just was too big, too much surface area. It just drew too much current. Also, these little brackets that I made to hold it are also out of stainless. Now remember, stainless is a resistor it resists current and heats up. So be careful, you want to use wire. But the problem is when you use the wire like this, it's going to corrode in the solution because of the electrolysis process. So what are we going to do? Well, as you can see here, I plastic coated the ends. Really neat, wired them all together, soldered them up. No, you cannot solder it to stainless, you can only solder it to copper. So I soldered the copper wires together, plastic dip them, wires are protected, we're great, ready to go in the tank. Now, let me show you what an assembled array is going to look like. As you can see, there's a nice big plastic bolt at each end. The ends are plastic dipped, they're all soldered together, a cable comes up, goes up to the canister cover. Now you can see these bolts here is where it connects for the uh, negative and positive. And on the other side, you see the negative and positive terminals also. This is where the current's going to go in. 12 volts, X amount of amps, making hydrogen. So now, let's put our cans together. Okay, so here it is. Our arrays are attached to their terminals. And they're going to go right in here. But wait, we need to add our aqueous solution. Now, that's a fancy word again for water. Use distilled water. Regular water has too many impurities in it and will make a cloudy solution and scum up with brown garbage everywhere. Just don't do it, okay? It's tempting to do it. You may experiment with it at first, but try to stay with the distilled water. So now we're going to pour the distilled water into our canisters. Okay, now we have our distilled water in our canisters, we need to add our electrolyte, which in this case is lye. Now remember, this stuff is nasty. It will burn your skin, it will blind you. You want to wear gloves, and you want to wear glasses. So, I'm going to put on my glasses and gloves. Like I said before, the lye is nasty stuff. It's a caustic chemical. Remember, it was used in drain cleaner. They've outlawed it because it's so nasty and bad for the environment. But it makes a great, great solution for making hydrogen. 
no, these aren't just cool. They actually protect my eyes. So now we're going to take our lye. I put it in this nice little Rubbermaid box because I want to keep it dry. If you get the stuff wet, it clumps together. It'll start fizzing and burning. It's bad stuff. I cannot emphasize how safe you have to be with this stuff, okay? Let me show you what it looks like. Big old snowflakes. So that's what it looks like. We're going to measure out a little bit. We're going to drop it into the container. We're going to have the current on so you can see when the process of electrolyzing begins. Because there will be no process until we drop the lye in. It's really neat. And in this way, we will control the current of the electrolyte solution. The more lye you put in, the more current you flow. You don't want to use too much current and you don't want to use too little. So, let's get to it. Before we add the lye to our solution, we have to do the electrical hookups. Let me show you how that's going to happen. So I'm going to put this nasty stuff away and we're going to do some electrical hookups. We're basically going to use regular cable that I've already set up here and we're going to hook everything up. Basically we're going to use some jumpers to go from one to another. Just that simple. That's our electrical connections there. Then we're going to take our main power connections and we're going to hook those up parallel. It's not series because it draws so much current. It's a parallel setup. It's real easy. You electronic guys know exactly what I'm talking about. But it basically means negative and positive, they go together, and then negative and positive to the battery. That's a parallel setup, just to put it simply, okay? All right, if you notice on this little plexiglass panel, we have a couple of gauges mounted. There's actually three. One is a volt gauge, the other is an amp gauge, and the other is an airflow meter. The airflow meter will tell us how much hydrogen we're putting out. The volts will tell us what the voltage is, obviously, and the amperage will tell us how much current we're flowing through there. Now, for the electronics guys, you can multiply volts times amps to get watts, which is a measure of power. We're going to do that later, just so you know how much power we're using to make this hydrogen. So. It's time to introduce our power supply, which is a 12-volt battery. But we've got to make some room here real quick. 